Hello guys and welcome to a tropical update. I have not done one of these in a while. So bear with me while I'm trying to get my bearings right back in the game. Um, I should be back for the rest of the seasons. And I may cover Westpac and all those other regions as well. But today we are talking about the Eastern Pacific. As we do have something to watch out here while the Atlantic is dead. Um, for how long it's going to stay inactive in the Atlantic, I don't know. I mean, if I had to take a guess, it'll probably be another week or so before we see something pop up. But, you know, here's the more pressing matter at hand because this might actually be a land threat. So this is what we're going to be talking about. Alright, this is disturbance number one. It's a broad area of low pressure that is expected to form in a few days a couple hundred miles south of the coast of southern Mexico. Some gradual development of the system is possible thereafter as it moves west northwest northwestward off the coast of Mexico. So the 48 hour percentage is 0%, so it's not going to form in two days period. Um, the five day chance is low, it's at 30%. So um, I'm going to keep on track of this for you guys in Mexico, as this, like I said, this may be a land threat later on down the line, but we'll see what happens as we go forward and we take a look at a few miles. The, the models I'm primarily going to be looking at is the GFS, the EC, ECMWF, or the European model, and the ICON model, since those are the three that are primarily showing this system as a whole for the time being. And after we get done looking at the models, we're going to look at the sea surface temperatures and what have you. As uh, you know, I'm going to try to keep these actually short and sweet for you guys, so you know, you're not sitting through fillers and whatnot. So we're going to get started here. We're looking at the GFS here. And as you can see, the initialization is there, there's nothing right there. There's some there's some precipitation here, but it's nothing that is consolidated at the moment. So we're going to go 24 hours out. And this is just a, uh, just a bunch of precipitation. Uh, this is just a random pop-up low pressure that is probably not going to that does the GFS does from time to time do pop up random low pressure areas. So this is probably a, just a random low pressure area at the moment. So there's nothing here to really talk about here. So we're going to move past it to 48 hours. And this, I think this right here, this is our culprit right here. This, uh, this 10, 11, I believe. And we're going to take a look at the soundings here. And as you can see, the shear is moderate so this does have pretty good wind shear and some really good relative humidity too 91 percent that's a that's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere um yeah 11 knots shouldn't do too badly from that, that amount of shear um it, it'll be enough to develop it at least so let's go out to 72 hours and is our system right here that's trying to consolidate here and this is 13 knots shear so the, this area has a little bit stronger of shear um, than you know the other area and the, as you guys can see the relative humidity is still pretty high at 95 percent so the, the precipitation the moisture is not a problem Shear, shear might be the only limiting factor for right now that I can know of. So let's go out to 96. And as you can see, now it's starting to really get get to, get going here. This whole area right here is our system right here. And let's take a few soundings. So 11 knots of shear. It's gone down a little bit. So this is definitely good news for the storm. But uh, might be bad news for the people in Mexico. Obviously, I'm not going to fear monger. I'm going to show you guys exactly, you know, what the models models say, and I'm not going to, you know, do it for clickbaits and stuff. So right now, the wind shear is still at 11 knots, so it's still in that green, uh, greenish area for this to really grow at a good pace with the 95% relative humidity. All right, so 120 hours out. And as you can see, now we got a hurricane. So now it's really starting to get going here. 12 knots of shear, 
93% relative humidity. So it, it's got uh, it's got some good stuff going for it right now. So you, normally I don't like to go past five days, but we're going to go to day six just because here. So 144 hours out is a 970. Now, here's the thing with this. Until we actually have a low pressure system form, I do consider the GFS and the icon to be kind of outliers here. I'm not don't get me wrong, this scenario definitely can happen, but oh you know you know, last time we bought into a you know, the GFS is with Pamela Pamela. And we saw how that worked out. So yeah, as you can see, I'm a little spectacle uh, to, you know, the GFS right now. And I'm, you know, do I think 970 can happen? That's a borderline, that's getting on the borderline Cat 3 territory. Sure. I think it could happen. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. But, you know, as I say, time, we'll see throughout time whether this turns out to be correct or not. Um, with that being said, let's take a look at the European model here. And as you can see, you know, initialization, there's nothing really out there. This is why I'm going to go six days out uh, to show what's going on. 24 hours, there's not really a whole lot to talk about. 48 hours, pretty much the same. 72, not there yet. 96, we still don't got anything yet. Um, 120, this is the area that's trying to get together right here. So as you can see, you know, we still, we got, we, it's still nothing, but it's still something that's trying to close off. And as you can see, day six is when it starts to close, it, that closes off and we finally see something on the European model. Um, honestly, you know, if I, if I had to take a guess, I'm, I'm somewhere in between the GFS and the European right now. So it could be a category one or a strong tropical storm. That's, that's what I'm forecasting right now. Um, I don't want to go any farther than that. Just on the off chance that, you know, we get played by the GFS again and that don't happen. So I'm keeping it conservative for now. And, you know, that's all I can really say about that. All right, so here is the icon, and we're just going to fast forward here. As you see, it, it doesn't really get going until about the 96 hour mark. And no, this is kind of like it's it's slower to develop it, but it quickly develops it after it does get going. So we're going to go to 120. And as you see, we got a thousand and three millibars. And then hour 144, we got 993. So it starts to really get going once it starts. Like in that 48 hour time period, it gets it gets going pretty good. So we're not obviously I said we're only gonna look out six days, so this is as far as we're gonna go. Um let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures right now. And as you see, you guys as you guys know, we're now entering the fall season of the world of the country uh not only the united states but mexico as well and anybody in the, the territories between the east pack and the atlantic so as you can see the water temperatures are cooling down just a small bit but not enough to deter development of any kind if it pops up as you can see and then the area that they could have developed, we got some 30s, we got some 29s and 28s. So that's still perfectly fine for development of this system going forward. And uh, I'll definitely keep my eye on this for you guys in Mexico. As I said, this may, you know, make a landfall in Mexico. Some models are indicating that, some others are not. So we're going to have to really pay attention to see which one's the outliers and which one is telling the truth. And I will be here every step of the way. And hopefully, like I said, I'll be back. I'll be here for the remainder of the Eastern Pacific season and the Atlantic season. So with that being said, you guys, I'll keep watching this for you guys. And I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next one.